Welcome back to BNB Sports Zone. Chased down by Beal in the corner for three, gets fouled and hits. Welcome to DC. Walker tied him out. You know when you're at the USA Cup, you're taking a slight I'm taking a slight What's good everyone, it's your boy Natsu with another video for the channel. Welcome back to the NBA Sports Zone. Hopefully this video will not be as long as the last one, but now I want to dive into my thoughts on the potential signing of one James Bradbury to the Washington Commanders. So, he's a 6'1", 212 pound cornerback, he's entering his 7th season in the league, still only 28 years old. And in my opinion, if we signed him, he'd be the best commander that we have signed thus far. We've signed Andrew Norwell, Trey Turner. I mean, like we've signed a bunch of guys from the Panthers, especially guys that Coach Rivera was was a head coach for. But I think James Bradbury would be the best of the bunch. I mean, you only have to go back to last season, before the start of the 2021 season, where James Bradbury was a top five corner in a lot of people's books. A top five corner, if not top 10 corner, including our own D'Angelo Hall, had him in his top five cornerback rankings during the 2021 offseason. And, I mean, he was selected to his first Pro Bowl in 2020 after he had three interceptions, 47 combined tackles, two forced fumbles. And on top of that, he was locked down in coverage. Usually, I said this in the past, but usually with these cornerbacks that rack up a lot of stats, a lot of counting stats when it comes to interceptions, tackles, all that, usually they're not the best in coverage, right? Because the get targeted a bunch but James Bradbury was locked down in coverage plus had the stats to show how great of cornerback he was and he was essentially what Kendall Fuller was for us in the, during the 2020 regular season I don't know if you guys remember during that five game stretch where he's coming off the offseason injury his first five game stretch of the season he had like or I think it was a four game stretch he had uh, four or five picks during four or five weeks of the season that was like to start off things he obviously had that diving interception the back of the end zone against the Giants and stuff and James Bradbury was essentially Kendall Fuller that type that Kendall Fuller for the entire entire 2020 season and and you also you got to factor in guys that he did that he did that based off of the whole Jonathan Allen effect, right? Or similar to the Jonathan Allen effect, I should say. Remember, Jonathan Allen had his best season in his NFL career after getting signed to a long-term extension. James Rabbery did the same. He got signed to a three-year, $43.5 million contract with the Giants after leaving the Carolina Panthers during the 2020 offseason. I remember a lot of fans, a lot of Redskins fans at that point wanted James Bradbury, especially with all the rumors circulating about him, especially with him saying that, you know, he, Washington might might be interesting to him as a potential suitor and obviously the connections with Coach Rivera and, and the whole scheme and stuff. And we didn't sign him. The Giants ultimately had to foot the bill. And fortunately for us, I would say, you know, we didn't have to dish out all that money for a cornerback, even with him being a pretty good cornerback. And um, in terms of being a good cornerback, he did drop off a bit, right, in the 2021 season. He wasn't that Pro Bowl guy that we saw in the 2020 season. But at the same time, he was still fairly solid. He actually had more interceptions in 2021 than 2020. He had four interceptions last year, tying for sixth in the NFL. And, I mean, again, he's still only 28, was pretty good in coverage. Definitely did go down a tick. He was not locked down anymore. But I think for all the people out there who say, oh, the Giants are getting rid of him. That means he's no longer a good player. He's washed. No, it's just because it's a cap casualty. The Giants are strapped for money. Like they, they're trying to get rid of anybody and everybody that's a high, high price guy. And um, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much, that tells you why James Bradbury is leaving the Giants. And honestly, once again, I think he would be a great player for us. Lastly, I want to get to the questions that many people have with James Bradbury in terms of fit in Washington. The first thing is Nazi um, money. Like we we don't have much money. We're I think we have eight million dollars right now in cap room, 
But with the release, the eventual release, likely release, I should say, of Landon Collins post June 1, that'll probably save us about $7 million more on the cap. That would put us back in the top 10. I just checked back in the top 10 in cap space in the NFL. And also another team, the second team that is most linked to James Bradbury right now. We're one of the two teams, but the second team is the Eagles, who have less cap space than us, or probably have less cap space for us, especially after the Landon Collins release that is likely going to happen. So I think in terms of money, he's pro- he's definitely not going to ask for as much as he got in 2020. And honestly, it might be a one-year deal, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Like a one-year prove-it deal, James Bradbury being back to what he was in 2020. Um, and it'll probably be pretty cheap. And a lot of teams, you also have to factor, a lot of teams are strapped for money right now in general because this is after the draft. This is after most of free agency has happened. And this is where we pounced on the Charles Leno signing last year. This is where we pounced on the DeAndre Carter signing last year. And potentially James Bradbury could be another one of those guys. The last point I want to get to is the fit point, the specific fit point. And that is, oh, Nazi. James Bradbury is another boundary corner. Do we need another boundary corner, especially when we have two high-priced boundary corners as is, especially with Kendall Fuller playing much better on the outside last year than he played on the inside? He pretty much, not just much better, like Kendall Fuller was one of the best cornerbacks in the league last year, guys, on the outside. I know everybody has memories of him getting burnt, but PFF had him as the third best cornerback in the entire NFL last year, only behind A.J. Terrell and Jalen Ramsey. So, like, for as much as we like to criticize Kendall Fuller, I mean, second half of last season especially, he ended up strong once he moved to the outside. And, again, a lot of people say Kendall Fuller. He's getting paid at least $10 million a year on the outside. William Jackson, our marquee free agent from the 2021 season, is getting paid about $13 million, I believe, per season, right? But honestly, in this past Happy League, guys, I've been saying it before and I'll say it again. You can never have too many good cornerbacks, boundary or otherwise. And especially with the Percy Butler pick and Ron Rivera already talking up Percy Butler as a potential nickelback for us. And Cam- Cameron Curl could also serve that role as well as we've seen in the past. I think James Bradbury would be a great player for us, a great fit. And might might move our defense back to to what it was in 2020, right? Being an elite defense, especially with the soft schedule, relatively soft schedule that we have this upcoming season. So that's my thoughts for the James Bradbury potential signing here in D.C. We should go after him. We should sign him. We, I mean, he would be a great fit for us. Everybody likes to talk about the boundary cornerback thing, but honestly, can never have too many good ones. And already has ties with Ron Rivera and, and the Carolina Panthers that we already have on this roster. So... Go get James Bradbury, and that's my thoughts on the potential Bradbury signing in Washington. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the DMV Sports Zone channel, where I like to post fire content like this as much as possible. Also, go follow our Twitter page at DMV Sports Zone, Instagram page all over case DMV Sports Zone, and our TikTok at DMV Sports Zone. And that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a couple of things, and see you on the next one.